uh, I'd see Gandhi as a as a point of departure, not as a point of arrival. You know, uh, we have to look at his significance in the modern world today. Uh, and uh, then I think the Buddha also profoundly influenced me. I also found uh, uh, the Buddha interesting because he states the, there is no self, the self doesn't exist. And I would interpret that to mean that the self doesn't largely exist. That we are all conditioned beings, you know. So, so much of today's, you know, modern vision is to get to the top. So there is a lack within you, and your failure to deal with this lack, to find out, you know, what is it? Uh, you compensate through wanting more of all this, more power, more money, uh, you know, becoming more of a celebrity, etc. And uh, this uh, lack, if you don't address it, you, you're never fulfilled. And this sense of lack You know, it's, it's, it's only through reflection, uh, quiet, some quiet time, some self-understanding that you realize that these are all the wrong ways for fulfillment, you know, power, money, sex, uh, being a celebrity. And that there is something within you which you have not tapped, a resource which can be ahimsa, which can be sisterhood and brotherhood, which can be connectedness with nature, which can be poetry, dance, music, uh, friendship. And this is not just, it's not just an individual journey because this lack that you experience, you create problems for other people. You know, you, you exploit other people. You want more money so you don't pay proper wages to people who work with you. The deeper you go into yourself, you discover your common humanity. You discover this common ground you belong to. And as long as you are at the surface, you discover, you see the differences in color, in, you know, in gestures or in ritual or whatever. I won't say that human beings are ontologically or intrinsically nonviolent or you know prone to ahimsa. I'd only say that the experience of sisterhood and brotherhood and nonviolence is a satisfying experience, is a fulfilling experience. You know, it doesn't drive you into a corner with anger and uh, jealousy. Uh, you know, th these are kind of uh, self-defeating -de notions. You know, you're a lesser human being, you're less fulfilled. So quite apart from whether we are intrinsically drawn towards, uh, you know, nonviolence, the experience of nonviolence, nonviolent communication, nonviolent behavior, nonviolent solving of problems, nonviolent political negotiations, Gandhi refute, refused to see the opponent as an enemy. And therefore, there was, I, I don't think there was any hatred in him vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, uh, Indians who opposed him or the British whom he was confronting. I felt that one had to talk to people with whom one disagreed, you know. Uh, people who, you know, that people from different religions would say, you know, our religion has been trodden upon or we have been humiliated. And I didn't have the patience for that kind of talk earlier on. But now I feel if they, if they really feel that, then they merit a li listening, you know. And maybe the odd X, Y, Z might 
use it for use these arguments for this purpose or that purpose to gain power but there are a number of people who actually feel these things yeah we've been marginalized we've been humiliated whatever so i think it's important to not dismiss what they say yeah. but begin a process of dialogue with them western notion of hope is different from the indian notion of hope okay by the indian notion of hope i mean nishkama karma mm. which uh, is from the bhagavad gita and gandhi was very powerfully drawn to that you know we we act not because we want to see the fruits of our action uh, but because it's right and moral to act action without attachment to the fruits of one's action so who are we to know i mean you know will climate change destroy the you know 90% of human beings in the next 50 years uh, or will some critical mass be achieved in the next couple of decades and something remarkable will change everything uh so though the you know it looks dismal and the clouds look forbidding you know heavy and dark and forbidding i think this notion of nishkama karma is a very helpful notion mm. you know mm. who are you to kind of uh, say that you know i i have to in my lifetime see see these fruits and results mm. you know you have faith and you do the right thing you know ahimsa is not just a you know self disciplining in a very monkish kind of way but ahimsa is also joy is also sisterhood and brotherhood and i keep saying there are two ways of looking at life one is vertical where you are a climber you want to get to the top or the other way which is gandhi's way which is horizontal where you are connected with other human beings you are not just climbing like this and when you are horizontal you are also close to the earth you are connected with the earth you know you 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 care for the earth and the earth is part of you 